Okay, so uh, this is our video for Unit 9, uh, and there's only one video in this unit, and it is going to focus on the uh, Americas. And we're going to talk about several tribes uh, that live in North America in class, but the video is going to focus on the Mesoamerican tribes, the ones that are located in present-day Mexico, into Central America, and South America and uh, mainly the Aztecs, Mayas, and the Incas. And uh, we're going to talk about their religion, their rituals, and uh, their beliefs. And uh, hopefully you'll get some good stuff out of the video. Here we go. Okay, this is Unit 9, and we're going to be talking about the Americas. And in this video, we're going to focus on, of course, the uh, Mesoamerican tribes uh, from Central and South America. In our SOL, the student will demonstrate uh, the knowledge of the major civilizations of the Western Hemisphere, including the Maya, Aztec, and Inca. Uh, we'll also throw in the Olmecs to talk about that and talk about geography and uh, some of their cultural, political, and economic structures. Okay, so who were the early inhabitants of uh, the Americas? We think that they were, of course, hunter-gatherers who came across uh, during the last Ice Age at an area that we call the Bering Strait. And uh, we think they were following animal herds on foot. And this area, the water level dropped because of the cold weather. It also froze over. And so they followed them across this land bridge. And this is up where Alaska and Asia meet. Uh, and as you can see, it's not a real big gap. And uh, when it was frozen, it was a total land bridge. Hunter-gatherers coming across. Now, uh, once it warms, they're sort of trapped over here. So keep that in mind. And uh, the different cultures formed as they uh, spread out across the Americas. And uh, so they were cut off from Asia when the Ice Age ended. And they developed independently from uh, the uh, period, from the Eastern Hemisphere. Their cultures developed totally independent of those. Some of the technology was uh, mostly caught up in things like the Stone Age tribes that we've talked about. Metal was very rarely used, and uh, they developed many tools. Uh, the wheel was also developed, but it was not used for transportation yet. I'm not sure you can imagine. They said, hey, like, you know, Bob, what's that for? I don't know. It's round. We'll figure out something for it. All right, so what were the three major Mesoamerican tribes? The three major tribes are the Mayas, the Aztecs, and the Incas. And if you look at the map here, the red was uh, current day Mexico. Okay, uh, that is where the Aztecs were. The green on the Yucatan Peninsula was where the Mayan civilization was located. And then if you look at the orange on South America, the only South American tribe that we talk about, the Incas, located in the Andes Mountains. Okay, so let's talk about Mesoamerica. All right, the first group of people that we're going to talk about are called the Olmecs. The Olmecs uh, name actually means rubber people. Uh, they were uh, the base culture of Mesoamerica. They settled along the Gulf Coast and they influenced trade uh, and uh, including that of jade, uh, which can be found throughout Central America. Their religion was polytheistic. Uh, it usually revolved around uh, sacrifices. Also, uh, animals like the jaguar were important. And of course, the sun. Remember that the climate here is, is pretty warm and the sun plays a huge role uh, in their life. Uh, they also played a game called Pakatak, which uh, was very similar to like basketball. Uh, a big ring's put up there, and you can kick and throw the ball around and try to get it through this hoop up there. Uh, it's It often involves sacrifice as well, uh, especially when the Aztecs take it up. Okay, uh, they built temples and pyramids, and uh, they went on pilgrimage to religious sites and shrines with these temples. Uh, they're also famous for creating what we call as the colossal heads or the large heads of their rulers. As you can see, this is a huge freaking melon. Check that thing out. And if you got a big head like that, you got this. Move your head. William, move your 
Look at the size of that boy's head. I'm not kidding, it's like an orange on a toothpick. You gotta give the boy a car Well, that's a huge noggin. It's a virtual planetary. Has its own weather system. It's a virtual planetary. Heat! Has its own weather system. Heat! Move! Yeah, they ain't its own weather system. Look at that thing. It's it's massive. All right, there'll be no comments about how big my head is right now. Okay, so some of the achievements uh, of the Olmec people, of course, were the uh, calendar that they developed, which will sort of be picked up on by the Mayas and the Aztecs. And we're going to get more into some of those things, too, with the calendars and stuff in class. Okay. The next group of people that we want to talk about are one of the three primary tribes that we're talking about in this unit, and those are the Mayan people. Uh, the Mayan civilization was located in what we consider Mexico today, part of the Mexican Central American Rainforest, which is located on the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, today, this is Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Belize, so those are the countries that would be represented. And uh, the economy... Uh, was sort of based around, of course, agriculture and trade. And uh, it's represented by its capital city, which is Chichen Itza. And, of course, Chichen Itza is uh, unusual because usually we eat the chicken, not the other way around. But it was their primary city-state. And it was a group of city-states that were ruled by kings during this time period. And <clears throat> I did want you to know that they had several different groups. The priest nobles and warriors made up their upper class and everyone else was considered a peasant and they paid taxes and uh, usually they used corn to pay their taxes and uh, also I wanted you to know like a lot of the other cultures that we've talked about women had very few rights and once again like I said their economy was based in agriculture and trade amongst the city-states that were created there each one having its own king and its own set of nobility and priest uh, their religion was very polytheistic, and usually it was based around the sun, but other parts of nature were also represented. Very polytheistic, multiple gods. The god that's pictured up here was Chak, the god of corn. Obviously, corn was an important part of their life, so they wanted to have that as well. Uh, they built pyramids to pray to and, and different things like that. And one of the things I want you to know is that priests in the Mayan world were totally preoccupied with the concept of time. That's why their calendar becomes such an issue and so important. Uh, they also had several other achievements. Uh, they created a form of hieroglyphics, a very complex 365-day calendar. I think theirs was actually like 360 days, but then they had like a five-day holiday at the end. And because they were so obsessed with time, they became really good with numbers and astronomy. And then suddenly... Uh, around uh, between 850 and 1000 AD, they abandoned their city-states. A lot of people believe is they just got tired of the Aztecs, and some of the city-states were conquered by the Aztecs. Okay, and speaking of the Aztecs, we have them up next. They're located in an arid valley in uh, the area of central Mexico. And so you can see that is where this is as well. Now, of course, there's the whole legend around why they picked their capital city of Tenochtitlan. Uh, it is actually located on an island in the middle of Lake Texacoco. Uh, and of course the legend was as if they should find a capital city and establish it where they found an eagle sitting on a cactus with a snake on its mouth. And of course they do that at Tenochtitlan in the middle of Lake Texacoco and the Mexican flag represents this story. Uh, it was ruled by an emperor, and uh, of course this empire was built around a warrior class. The army has vi very total control uh, within the Aztec civilization. And their agriculture uh, was also based uh, the basis of their economy. And uh, they also would make the people that they conquered uh, give them tributes, okay, and uh, they also had slavery already at this time. Now, one way that they farmed was a, a unique use of their uh, their agriculture was a use of their uh, environment because it was an arid region. There wasn't a lot of fertile soil, so they actually used the lake 
to build these reed-like platforms uh, and put water into it. And it was sort of like a floating garden. Uh, now they had beans, squash, tomatoes, and peppers. And uh, they basically had made these fields of uh, sh from the shallow lake beds that they had drained out and done. And I'll show you a picture of a chinampa on the next page. All right, their religion. Of course, their religion is very, very polytheistic. And uh, their chief god was the sun god. And their priests were a special social class. Uh, they ran the schools. They served as astronomers and mathematicians. And their, their s religion was very ceremonial. Uh, and it was performed daily. It was based on warfare and them being the dominant culture. Of course, they built pyramids and they used sacrifices. Uh, many of the people that they had conquered uh, were used as prisoners. And their warriors even used uh, people to practice their skills and play games by how they killed people and which zones they killed people. And I'll talk more about this in class. They had several also though, uh, achievements. Uh, they used uh, causeways and aqueducts, canals, and dams uh, because of the rivers. Uh, the, the lake being the important thing to uh, sort of, you know, giving them a good uh, soil to base their crops in. This is what a chinampa looked like. And as you can see, they used the boats to go around and to grow their crops there. Pretty cool, huh? All right, the last civilization that we're going to talk about is the only one from, the, uh, from South America. And it was located in the Andes Mountains of South America. And uh, the Incas actually mean children of the sun. And this is where they would be located along the west coast of South America in the Andes Mountains. Uh, we talk about some of their cities, uh, Machu Picchu, Cuzco, which was their capital. Uh, today, the countries would be Peru, uh, northern Chile, uh, Colombia, and Ecuador, Bolivia, and northern Argentina also had uh, some areas of the Incan people. Okay, In terms of their government, uh, they were ruled by an emperor with absolute power, and uh, they had very much direct rule. The government would arrange marriage. Citizens were required to have passes to travel. Uh, the government controlled when they harvested their crops, and they conquered, forced, uh, they conquered people and then forced them to adopt the Incan ways. Okay, so total control by an emperor. All right, their economy was based on this high altitude agriculture. So potatoes, beans, squash, peanuts, cotton, and they raised animals like the llama, guinea pigs, and alpacas. And they used terrace farming, as you can see, from this picture of Machu Picchu that different levels were cut into the mountain and this is how they uh, sort of based their their agriculture and their whole civilization. Their religion was very polytheistic and once again the sun played a major role, the sun god. Uh, there were multiple gods and human sacrifice again was part of this uh, culture. Uh, some of their achievements, they kept records and a road system. Uh, the record system is called Kipu, where you use knots to uh, do your accounting system. And we'll talk much more about that in class. And I have a packet in your notes that will help you out with that. And uh, they became incredible engineers. Uh, they used this road system to link their, their empire. And they created bridges across the mountain that were made from grass. Uh, some amazing, amazing accomplishments for the Incan people. And of course, the Aztecs and the Incas are going to be conquered by the Spanish. Great. All right, some of the achievements of the Mayan, Aztec, and Incan civilization. Calendars. Uh, and of course, we, you know, you've heard all about the Mayan calendar and how we were going to, the world was going to end in 2012 and that stuff. Uh, you know, it didn't happen that way. And I, they, I actually saw an interview with like a Mayan historian type thing. He said basically they just stopped writing it. Mathematics. We're going to get much more into the mathematics and the concept of zero and the number system of the Mayans and, and, and the Aztecs when we get to uh, class. They had writing system. Very much pictograph based. They did not have the idea of letters and sounds like the Phoenicians developed. 
but very similar to the Egyptians if you look down here. Okay? And we are going to compare some of these cultures and the religious ideas. The idea of part human, part animal, temples, pyramids, and uh, the worship of the sun to some of the other cultures that we've talked about. So those are some of the incredible things that the Mayan, Aztec, and Incan civilizations developed. Here's Kipu. Okay, so in your notes, what I would like for you to do is compare the Maya, Aztec, and Incas. They all worshipped the sun, believed in human sacrifice, believed that spirits were in animals. How does this compare to the other cultures that we've talked about? Or which other cultures had similar ideas? Okay. What are the big ideas of this video? All right, the Mayan, Aztec, and Incan civilizations emerged in South America, Central America, and Mexico. All three were polytheistic, and their religions involved the worship of the sun and nature. All had some type of human sacrifice. And all three had incredible accomplishments in science and math. Hope you enjoyed the video.